Today we're going to talk about uh, basically what happens when you pass away, uh, what happens if you don't have a will. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about making a will today. I know it's a subject that we don't like to talk about, just like the other day when I talked a little bit about uh, 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 life insurance, uh, but it's a necessity when we're talking about prosperity and financial peace. Welcome to the Prosperity Rx Podcast. This is Keith Abel with your prescription for prosperity. This is a podcast where I give you hope. I show you the path to build a life of health, wealth, and prosperity, to build a life that you don't need a vacation from. Folks, we've all messed up by believing some of the prevailing wellness and money myths in our culture. The turning point in your life, however, comes when you're willing to own up to it, to take your health and your finances into your own hands, to claw your way out of whatever's holding you back and never live in that lie again. Let me ask you, what good is your wealth if you have poor health? And what good is your health if you have no wealth? If you're willing to own up to it, to accept that you do have the power to change your circumstances, and that you're willing to do whatever it takes, then this podcast is for you. Humorous Josh Billings said, health is like money. We never have a true idea of its value until we lose it. You truly can change your life and start on the true path for good health financial peace and prosperity so let's get on with the show uh, like I said today we're going to talk about making a will and what do you need to know now we know that making will isn't fun to think about uh, none of us are promised tomorrow but many of us still live like we're invincible you know a, a 2017 survey found that nearly six out of ten of, of American adults don't have a will and that's absolutely crazy the truth is, your loved ones depend on you to make a will. You know, even if you don't own multiple homes or, or consider yourself wealthy. So what is a will? A will is a last will and testament, is a signed, legally binding document that explains exactly how you want your property and your other assets to be handled after your death. Uh, you can also put information in there uh, about how specific items are going to be dealt with. And if you have children, who's going to take care of them and how? If you don't, uh, if you don't want them to go live, that, live with that mean Aunt Betsy, your will spells out where you do want them to go. And creating a will allows you to decide beforehand where you'd like your assets to go after you're gone. And that's what a last will and testament is all about. You get to decide who gets all your stuff, single or married, and it matters. But why making a will is important? Well, each state has its own laws when it comes to setting the affairs uh, of someone without a will. If you don't have one or if it's determined to be invalid because it wasn't signed or, or uh, done the right way, a judge will appoint an administrator. Usually they, don't, uh, usually they appoint the spouse and then the children to serve as a personal representative, but it's not something you really want to leave to chance, is it? A will is the last gift that you're going to give your family and your loved ones. It makes the management of your assets clear and, and, and makes it real simple for everybody that's involved. If you don't have a will in place when you die, there's no guarantee that your wishes are going to be followed. But what happens if you die without a will? Well, when you die without a will, it's, it's called uh, uh, dying intestate. Basically, it means that you haven't left a written testimony about your after-death wishes. So if there's not a will, guess who gets to make all the decisions? The government. Just like in the famous cases uh, that, that we've heard about in the news, like uh, people like Prince and, and other uh, famous uh, folks that pass away without a will. The state law determines how to distribute everything that you have. And the final outcome may or may not reflect what you'd like to happen. Plus, dying without a will puts an unnecessary strain on your family. Not only will they be grieving, but they'll also be dealing with the mess that you've just left them, potentially for years. And they'll be stuck with a pile of legal fees to get it all sorted out. Basically, when we fail to make a will, we're not putting our loved ones first. Honestly, we can do a better job than that. And if you're, you're not prepared with a simple will, the courtroom could turn into a, a free-for-all with your family members in the, in, the, in the center of the ring. You don't want that, right? So get everything prepared beforehand. Here's what you'll need to know. 
Now, you've decided to, to make your will, but what needs to be in your will is the question. As a bare minimum, you need to make sure it includes the executor or personal representative. You're going to appoint somebody who will make sure your wishes are carried out to the T. This might be a lawyer you, that you've hired if your will is a bit complicated, but many people just choose a level-headed and honest relative. One of your adult children or, or a close family friend would do just fine. The personal representative will do more than just read the will. They'll also make sure all other end-of-life business gets taken care of correctly. Next, the beneficiary. If you're married, it may be as simple as just naming your spouse as the one who receives all your assets. But you'll definitely want to have some other beneficiaries named just in case your spouse isn't still alive when you pass away. Next, the inheritance instructions. Next, you'll want to spell out what you want each of the beneficiaries to receive. You know, if you've got children, it might just be a simple percentage of your assets or a dollar amount that you want each of them to have. The instructions may also include a list of specific items that you're living, leaving to uh, friends and family members. It's all up to you. And finally, the guardians. If you still have children who are minors, you'll want a, a will to specify who will take care of them when you're gone. Maybe it goes without saying, but be sure to talk with your choice of guardians before naming them in a will. This decision shouldn't be taken lightly. So what does a will not cover? Well, be sure to handle these other items that are not covered in your will. You might want to make a note in your will about where these documents can be found. So your retirement fund, your company 401k account, or your IRA accounts will already have beneficiaries named for them in their original documents. Life insurance policy or policies. The beneficiary or beneficiaries for your life insurance are also taken care of apart from your will. Joint tenancy assets. If you and someone else, like your spouse, hold a, a joint title to anything, like a house, a bank account, a vehicle, then the ownership would automatically pass us to the surviving person. If you want to make changes to the people receiving these funds, be sure to get in touch with the fund manager or the insurance company directly. Don't assume changing the beneficiaries in your will means these documents will be changed also. It's a separate matter altogether, but should really be coordinated. Next, you might ask, do I need a lawyer to make a will? Don't let the idea of making a will fill you with dread or, or visions of long, expensive lawyer visits. Most household estates aren't that complicated and don't need the work of an attorney. So what does complicated look like? In some rare situations, you may want to talk with an estate attorney because you have a large estate or you have assets in a different country, or maybe you wish to remove someone from your will, or you have concerns about someone contesting your will or claiming that you weren't of sound mind when you signed it. While these events and situations are not common, they're complicated enough to get some professional guidance from an estate attorney. But obviously, this is going to cost you some money. If you're looking to make a simple will to take care of basic things like your property, children, investments, and personal items, but you can do that online. Making a will online is the easiest and most cost-effective way to go about making a, a will nowadays. Yeah you know, go to one of the companies that, uh, uh, legal form type companies, and, and you can find wills there. All you need to do is fill in your information, and the will is tailored for you. Did you know that when lawyers draft wills, they use forms similar to the ones that are online with these services? So don't feel bad about cutting out the middleman. You can do that. Just remember to choose the correct state that you're living in and follow the rules when it comes to having your will signed and dated and the appropriate witnesses. Failing to do that can invalidate your will. A will produced online is just as legal as one a lawyer produced, but you can still consult a lawyer when using these forms if you've got any questions or concerns. So how to make a will. Well, number one, decide what property to include in your will. Go ahead and gather up all the paperwork for your home and other real estate that you own. You also want a list of all bank accounts, investments, and retirement accounts complete with account numbers, passwords, and links to their online sites if available. Number two, select your beneficiaries. Next, you'll decide how your assets are going to be distributed and who's going to get them. Consider all the possibilities and plan accordingly. If your spouse is still living, you may just leave everything to them. But if neither of you is around, how will you divide up your assets in your estate? You can leave an equal percentage or specified dollar amount to each of your children as you see fit. Whatever decision you make, write them down in the will. You can designate certain items for certain people to get, 
like giving the family grandfather clock to your oldest son because you notice he always liked winding that thing. Number three, choose an executor for your will. The executor is the person who will read the will and see that your wishes are explained in the will and are carried out. The executor will handle all those special giftings like the grandfather clock and use the funds in your estate to take care of paying any debts that you have left over. You want this person to be especially level-headed, ethical, and responsible, someone that's unable to be intimidated by strong-willed family members. You may want to choose one of your adult children, a family friend, or an attorney to be your executor. Normally, they will be paid for this duty out of the funds in the estate. Each state has specific laws about how to handle the compensation. Also, be sure to choose a backup candidate just in case. Number four, name guardians for your children. If you have children who are minors, you need to decide who their guardians are going to be, who will take care of them after you're gone. If you have the means to compensate the person taking on the responsibility, then that's also going to be spelled out in the will. That way you can help with the expenses of another person joining their household. Be sure to give the guardians access and authority to work with any insurance or savings accounts that you've established with your children in mind, like a 529 college savings fund or a savings account for a car. You want to make sure this money goes to pay for the things that you saved it for. Number, si number five, you want to sign your will in front of witnesses. And be careful, a written will is not valid unless it's signed and dated by the one writing the will, the testor, and two witnesses. Be sure these witnesses are not receiving anything in the will or they'll be disqualified. No state requires the will itself to be notarized, but some states want a document called a self-proving affidavit from the witnesses stating that they saw you sign the will or saw someone sign it in, in, at your request. This document will also acknowledge that you are in your right mind when, and that you're signing the, the will willingly. When a self-proving affidavit is attached to the will, it's going to save a lot of time in the probate process because the document will serve as the testimony for the witnesses. That way they don't have to be pre present in court. Number six, let everyone know beforehand. It's a really good idea to alert everyone involved ahead of time for the executor and the guardians. Be sure to get their permission before tagging them uh, with these responsibilities. They certainly need to be capable but also willing to carry this load. While you're talking about letting your wishes be known, do yourself a favor and read your will to your beneficiaries before you're gone. Trust us, taking away the element of surprise could save a lot of headaches for them later on. Number seven, store your will in your legacy drawer. Dave Ramsey recommends that you put together a legacy drawer to store your will and other important documents. A legacy drawer is a simple file or folder that holds all the documents your family would need if something happened to you. And make sure it's waterproof and fireproof. It should contain the original versions of your signed and witnessed will, your estate plans, insurance policies, tax returns, funeral instructions, passwords, and more. Like we said earlier, this isn't exactly fun but it's a necessary step to ensure that you've protected your loved ones. Regardless of how you do it, making a will is something you need to do, no matter what stage of life you're in. The truth is, we're all going to die somebody, someday. So why not leave a legacy of intentionality and generosity as your final, most meaningful gift that you give to your family? Guys, I hope you got value from this video. Uh, if so, be sure to share and like it. Also, when researching this topic, I came across a helpful guide called 10 Steps, uh, 10 Steps to Writing a Will. If you'd like a copy, message me at facebook.com forward slash prosperityrx, and I'll send it right over to you. That's 10 Steps to Writing a Will. Send me a message at facebook.com forward slash prosperityrx, and I'll get it right to you. Thanks again. Folks, this has been another episode of the Prosperity Rx Podcast, where we share with you your prescription for prosperity. Now's the best time to start taking control of your life. And as a loyal listener, I've put together a free course that you can take that will walk you through the steps of setting up and following a spending plan so your family can also get on the road of financial peace and prosperity. To get that course absolutely free, visit spendingplanclass.com. And if you enjoyed this episode, I hope you like and share it. And in future episodes, I'll be covering many topics to teach you how to improve and to 
take control of your health, as well as topics that encourage savings and debt for you. After all, what good is your health if you have no wealth? And what good is your wealth if you have poor health? So be sure to subscribe to my podcast on your favorite podcast platform. It's ProsperityRx Podcast. And be sure to subscribe to my blog, ProsperityRx.com.